there are lots of different types of mental disorders and they're very complicated and maybe one of the most complicated is schizophrenia. So in this video, I'm going to try to give you the basic ideas about schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is not some mild problem that people are having one day or one week. This is a very serious psychological disorder. It's not fatal, but the suicide rate is very high with schizophrenia, just as high with depression. Schizophrenia is very hard to describe, but I would say it's a serious disorder, severe problem with thought, communication, perception, emotion, and or movement. In other words, it, it covers many, many different areas of psychology in a person, and it's very complex. Here's another way to say it. Schizophrenia is a breakdown of thought processes, a deficit of emotions, hallucinations, paranoia, delusions, and disorganized speech and thinking. Although any particular person with schizophrenia doesn't have all of these symptoms. In fact, we can think of schizophrenia as many different disorders that overlap one another. The causes are genetics, early environment, neurobiology, psychological and social conditions, sometimes drugs and viruses will uh, contribute to the cause of schizophrenia. So it's very complicated. There are many myths about schizophrenia. Let's go through a few of them. Schizophrenia is not the same as split personality or multiple personality. That is a completely separate disorder called dissociative identity disorder. Schizophrenia is not low IQ. It is not related to intelligence. Having a high IQ does not protect people from this disease. In fact, there have been many very, very smart people like mathematician John Nash who had schizophrenia. Third, schizophrenia is not the same in all cases. Every case of schizophrenia is slightly different. If you know someone with schizophrenia, don't think that you understand schizophrenia because it's many different disorders that overlap with one another. And finally, schizophrenia is not usually a sign of dangerousness. Yes, once in a while people with schizophrenia are dangerous, but in general, no, it is not true. Schizophrenia is now considered a spectrum disorder by psychiatrists. A spectrum means a range or a continuum or a scale. Uh, so that means there's many different forms of schizophrenia and many different extremes and severities. Schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder, it is a type of psychosis. There are many different kinds of psychoses. This is the most common of all the psychotic disorders. Psychotic means out of touch with reality. How do we know if someone's out of touch with reality? Because they're having either hallucinations, false perceptions, they see things or smell things or hear things that aren't there, or they're having delusions. Delusions are extremely outrageous false beliefs. There are many different symptoms of schizophrenia. Psychiatrists divide them into two categories called positive and negative. Positive does not mean good. Positive means present and that uh, these are symptoms that are occurring too much. We want to reduce them. In fact, medications do a good job of reducing the positive symptoms. More troubling are the negative symptoms. Negative means these are things that don't occur enough. We wish the person could do this more. We do not really have medications that help with that. So positive symptoms include the hallucinations and delusions, cognitive impairment, difficulty thinking, for example, and remembering, disorganized thinking, that thinking is co complicated and confused, and disorganized speech. Person has trouble with the explaining things and talking, and then bizarre behavior. Uh, also, we might mention that uh, people with schizophrenia quite often have paranoia. They're excessively irrationally suspicious. The negative symptoms involve social withdrawal. They tend to be loners, stick to themselves. They don't socialize enough. They have flat affect and speech. Flat means they, they just don't have enough emotions. They don't have enough speech and they lack motivation and they lack attention. So positive means symptoms we want to decrease. Negative means symptoms we want to increase. What about the statistics on schizophrenia? Okay, in the world, about 1% of people, that's one out of 100, are diagnosed with schizophrenia. 
In some places, it's higher than other places. In the United States, it's roughly around 1%. What about gender differences? Some mental disorders have gender differences. For example, eating disorders are seen much more often in women, and uh, psychopathy is seen much more often than men. So there are these differences. But schizophrenia has roughly the same numbers of men and women. What about age? Yes, schizophrenia tends to strike people who are uh, in adolescence or late adolescence or 20s or maybe 30 years old. It is not typically seen in children, but sometimes is. In fact, then it's just called childhood onset schizophrenia. And it is sometimes seen in older people, but much more likely in people who are sort of college age. Here's a graph that shows the age of onset of schizophrenia for men and women. And you can see it's very, very high around age 20 and lower at other ages and roughly about the same in men and women. What happens to people with schizophrenia? Well, studies show that if you follow people for after 10 years after they've been diagnosed, about 20% are completely recovered. We don't know exactly why that happens, but remember, schizophrenia is a spectrum disorder, so there are many different forms of this disorder, and there's many different severities. 65% are somewhat recovered, are doing better. 5% are chronic. Chronic means they continue to have uh, symptoms. And then 10% have committed suicide, so schizophrenia is a very serious disorder. In the United States, we do a very poor job of handling mental illnesses. We do not have a good uh, system of mental, uh, mental health insurance. We do not have good uh, care for mentally ill people. It's a really unfortunate situation. The result is that many people with schizophrenia end up living on the streets, and it's a struggle to try to help them. People often ask, what is the cause of schizophrenia? The answer is we don't know, but we know that there are some genetic factors involved we call this a diathesis. Diathesis means there's some genetic potential. And we know that there's stress involved. Stress is a psychology term that means any kind of environmental event, like a head injury, or exposure to viruses, or exposure to drugs, or anything like that. So you can see in this little chart that the more genetically related you are to someone with schizophrenia, the higher your risk of getting schizophrenia. That's called a diathesis. But you still need to have some kind of stressful event for most cases of schizophrenia in order for that to come true, in order for it to be manifested in your behavior. Today, the most common approach in mental health is the biopsychosocial model. We take into account biological factors, psychological factors, and social factors that influence mental illness. These three things interact and overlap with each other. It's hard to separate them. Yes, genetics is an important part of schizophrenia. In one famous study that looked for genetic errors in the genes that influence the brain, a control group of people who do not have schizophrenia was found to have 5% errors or mutations in their genes. People with schizophrenia were found to have 15% errors. So people with schizophrenia have more genetic errors. Then when the scientists look to see if there's any commonality, they found no common mutation. That is, people with schizophrenia did not have any one thing in common genetically. What this tells us is that schizophrenia is a spectrum disorder, that there are many different forms of it, and therefore many different causes. And remember, Genetics is just one part of the picture. Environment, uh, experience, stress is another part of it. One gene that has been discovered to be involved with schizophrenia, major depression, bipolar disorder, which is called manic depressive illness sometimes, and autism, in other words, a very important gene, is called the DISC-1 gene. It means disrupted in schizophrenia number one. And this is a gene that helps regulate brain development. And so when you have an error or a mutation in this gene, you're more likely to have a mental illness. 
when we look at the brain chemistry that's involved with schizophrenia, we find two chemicals that are associated with or correlated with schizophrenia. One is dopamine, and the dopamine hypothesis says that people with schizophrenia sometimes have too much dopamine activity because they have too many D2 receptors. The receptors are chemicals in the brain that react to dopamine, uh, and they are numbered one, two, three, four, five, and the D2 receptors seem to be important for schizophrenia. So in fact, medications for schizophrenia help to block those D2 receptors so there's less activity. This helps reduce hallucinations and delusions. The second brain chemical that's been related to schizophrenia is called glutamate. Glutamate is the go chemical in your brain. It's the brain that helps you do thinking and remembering and learning. And so what we find is people with schizophrenia have too little glutamate activity. And in fact, one of the, maybe the most common symptom of schizophrenia is cognitive impairment. That people with schizophrenia have great difficulty with thinking, with memory, with learning. And that might be because of too little glutamate activity. Most mental disorders are related to other body functions, of course, because your whole body is an organism that works together. And schizophrenia has been found to be related to inflammation in your body, to your immune system, and even to the microbiome of your gut. So schizophrenia is sort of an organic disorder, like, like all mental disorders, really. The most significant treatment for schizophrenia is to use medications. These medications are called antipsychotic or neuroleptic, uh, and they're in two categories. The old ones, which were founded in the 1950s, are called typical, and the new ones from about the 1990s are called atypical or second generation. These medications help about 95% of people with schizophrenia, not by curing their schizophrenia, but by reducing their symptoms, especially hallucinations and delusions. I have a list here of some of those medicines, but they keep changing, uh, so don't, don't be too uh, uh, convinced that these are the current medications that are used. Now, one problem with these medications is they cause movement disorders such as tardive dyskinesia, and even malignant syndrome, which can be a risk for death. So there are some side effects to these disorders that are, that are not good. Now, besides the medications, people with schizophrenia, if they can uh, get these treatments, really do well with behavior therapies, with CB, cognitive behavior therapy, with counseling, and with social work, which helps them uh, deal with their uh, daily life uh, activities. All right, that brings us to the end of this very brief description of schizophrenia, the basic facts. There's so much more to learn about this complicated mental illness and very uh, difficult and, and problematic uh, mental illness. So I, I hope you learned something about it and I hope you'll do more research.